Hello and welcome back to the Earth, Ocean, Geo and Atmospheric Science mini symposium. Um, next up, we have Nataraj as a speaker. And just note that we're doing, we're having a video for this, um, for the talk this time. So um, Nataraj is here and you can ask questions in the chat if they're short and he'll answer them as we go, or you can post them to the Q&A and we'll have time for maybe one question at the end. Um, with that, let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome to the Sci-Fi 2021 presentation on predicting the economic impact of COVID-19 using real-time images from space. I'm Natra Stasgupta, I'm the VP of Advanced Analytics at RX Data Science. It's a uh, data analytics firm based in Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. And this uh, presentation is about how one can use images of Earth's surface at night to estimate economic um, characteristics such as GDP, uh, etc. And in particular, how these images were used last year in a, in a, in a project that I conducted at uh, Imperial College, how these images were used to estimate the impact, the GDP impact in India during the COVID timeframe. So there's going to be two parts to this presentation. In the first part, I'm going to give an overview of night lights, um, sort of the theoretical basis, and in particular, how night lights were used to predict the economic impact. In the second part, I have a brief tutorial in which I'm going to walk through the entire end-to-end -end process from downloading the data sets from NASA's website to using those data sets to make um, predictions. So let's get started. Um, so overview of night lights. What are night lights? Where can we get night lights from? Uh, and why should we use night lights? So uh, I presume, you know, many of you might find this familiar. It's the kind of um, scene that you may see whilst you're on an airplane. So when you look down in at nighttime, you can see the lights on Earth's surface. You know, these could be street lights, vehicles, etc. And uh, in, in brief, night lights are, are any light that can be seen on Earth from space at nighttime. These images are produced uh, by a satellite platform called SNPP or the Suomi National Polar Orbiting Partnership. It's not a single satellite, it's a suite of satellites. And there is an instrumentation on board the SNPP satellite platform called the Visible Infrared in Imaging Radiometer Meter Suite, so the VERSE uh, plat um, suite of uh, instruments. These are the instruments that are used to produce the images of uh, night lights on Earth. Um, and the, the, the satellites were first launched in 2011, and since then um, these images have been produced uh, and are readily available uh, on the web. So there are DNB or day night band monthly composites that is average of night lights over a period of let's say 30 days. These are available from the Colorado School of Mines, but usually there's a pretty um, significant data lag. So there's there could be a three to six month lag, which means if I want to, um, let's say, get the data for January, I can't get access to it until, you know, April or June, July and so on. So last year, thankfully, uh, NASA released a new suite of products under a new algorithm that had been created called the NASA Black Marble. So what the black marble does is that it, it cleanses the image quite significantly to remove artifacts such as, um, you know, cloud, um, uh, atmospheric arti artifacts, etc., that may obscure the actual night lights. Um, and I'll get to it in a moment, but basically what happened as a result of this work is that we were able to get real-time images of nighttime, uh, of night lights on Earth. Uh, so these, these new black marble products were released in 2019, 2020, and they're available with a three to four hour lag in the public domain. Now there are certain qualitative features of night lights that make it incredibly useful for research. First, Night lights are unbiased. What that means is that they're not really affected by data collection practices, individual opinions, corporate decisions, central banks, government agencies, etc. It's not like, um, you know, let's say if you want to estimate GDP and you're getting the records from the central bank, the records might have been, you know, there could have been changes made to the records that are not entirely transparent. 
these are the kinds of issues that you don't have to deal with when you're working with night lights because night lights are you know they are what they are what you see is what you get second they're easily and readily available so you can anyone you can go onto nasa's website right now uh, called the lads uh, dac website and you can download them immediately um you know like i said with a with a three to four hour lag so you can get night lights of the place where you are current currently um from you know and what it looked like yesterday today from from the website third even events on earth are not necessarily constraints for instance covid so during covid there were lots of issues with data collection and so on and because collecting night lights data does not require a physical presence as such um it's and it's it's much less affected by events that may occur on earth for they're publicly available and thus research is reproducible and verifiable and lastly it's not frivolous uh, that is to say because these uh, images are available in the public domain and if you make your research um, you know transparent if you share your methodology etc you can easily, um, uh, you know, you can, it, 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 another researcher can quite easily reproduce it and confirm whether, you know, it's, it's, it's actually valid. Now, why is night lights for GDP? Uh, firstly, the limitations in using conventional methods to measure the short term supply demand shock amidst the locks, lockdowns and other hardships of last year. Second, as I mentioned, it's well established in research, both in academic research as well as in international organizations, that NTL nightlights has a 95 to 99 percent correlation with GDP at a country level. So there have been numerous uh, research papers which have um, quite conclusively proven that there is a very strong correlation with GDP at a country level. There's, there's certain characteristics, as I mentioned, they're unbiased, stable, well-maintained, freely accessible that cannot be manipulated and retrievable in near real time. So we're going to speak about some of the technical characteristics of night lights. Uh, so those of you who have been in the GIS space would find this image familiar. You have grids, which are, diff which, which are essentially areas of lat long coordinates on Earth's surface. And so these grids are produced um, on a daily basis. These, these grids are essentially HDF5 um, files. And there are four different types of files that are produced. VMP46A1 is the daily at sensor top of atmosphere images or data set. So these are the images of uh, night lights on Earth um, as is, you know, without prior to any sort of curation. VNP46A2 is the moonlight adjusted nighttime, nighttime light products. A3 is the moonlight adjusted nighttime light products on a, aggregated on a monthly basis. And A4 is, are the same images aggregated on an yearly basis. So you have these grids that are produced on a daily basis. A2 um, takes those images and curates them. A3 does a monthly aggregation. A4 does a yearly aggregation. Now it's not, uh, you know, it's uh, so one of the one of the data sets that's mentioned here, VNP forty six A one. This is what I had available to myself last year, and you can't really use this, use these images as is, because there are certain you know conditions. For instance, moon illumination, as you can see in this part of the image, the bottom left Arabian Peninsula. That is what it looks like on 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 a night when you have the moon fraction equal to ninety six percent. The right image shows what the image looks like once it has been processed through the black marble algorithm. Uh, so you have moon illumination, reflection from vegetation, cloud, lightning, gas flares, aerosols, and other um, factors that affect the quality of the nightlight images. But since the black marble product was released, um, we were able to get very curate, well curated images uh, eventually. Um, so um, this is just a sort of a graphical depiction of the kinds of um, artifacts or issues that you encounter when using nightlight images as is. And person to the distribution of the availability of the black marble algorithm, a lot of these um, issues were addressed. 
Now each of these HDF file, uh, files, so these are the HDF5 files that you get on a daily basis. So each of these files are different layers. Again, you know, if you have used HDF5, you may be quite familiar with this. So the layers that were most important, at least for the work in terms of India, were the DNB at sensor radiance, which is the day night band at sensor image, the, the, the image, the radiance values as is radiance being the, um, the intensity of the pixel, you can say. Solar Zenith, the cloud mask, moon illumination fraction. I won't get into the details of these, but uh, one thing I'll point out here is that um, this is the A2, which is the curated data set, where you have the DNB corrected NTL layer. The corrected layer is essentially the one that you see here on the right side of each of these uh, quadrants. And you have those, but you also have a, another layer called the quality flag. And the quality flag can be used to estimate the pixel level quality. Um, that is, how sure are we that this pixel represents the actual nightlight and not, let's say, cloud or you know, illumination from other sources? So nightlights in terms of India, these are the tiles uh, for mainland India primarily um, that, are, that were used. There's essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can have another one for the islands. So total eight to nine tiles that you need to download um, in order to get a full picture of what night lights look like in India. This is what it looks like using a QGIS platform. So this is one of the tiles that were downloaded from the NASA website. And these are all the eight tiles. And uh, in the next image, I have it a bit more clearly. Um, this is when all the images have been um, sort of joined together. Uh, it's called creating a mosaic. And this is what it looks like. Now, the reason for using night lights for economic analysis, you know, so essentially we have spoken about what night lights are. We have, we have seen what kind, what tiles are needed in order to do the night light based and any sort of night light based research. And um, in this section, very briefly, we'll, we'll speak, we'll walk through uh, why night lights were well suited for economic an analysis in India. So one thing was quite certain. One was that that is, you know, there was uh, quite a clear correlation between the cumulative uh, deaths or the you know total count of um, COVID cases with the fall of GDP across many nations, and the situation in India was specifically very dire. So you had a 23 percent unemployment rate and 1.3 billion individuals on lockdown. It was this most stringent lockdown, stringent lockdown anyway in the world. And, uh, you know, if you recall in the US, uh, for those of you who were here, we had uh, almost an eight, eight plus person unemployment, which, which wrecked havoc. And in India, it was 3x higher, so 23%. Now, there are certain methods through which uh, GDP can be estimated, but many of these are not, not um, um, cannot be applied for in the Indian context. Firstly, you know, a lot of researchers can use unemployment claims data. So these are sort of some of the high frequency indicators with which you can estimate short term uh, supply demand shock. But unemployment claims are are hard to come by in India, um, and the official figures were, were, have not been published as far as I'm told uh, and I've read since 2016. Energy utilization, electricity usage also closely tracks GDP. Uh, it has a three month lag and due to the lag, you can't really get immediate results. Uh, credit card transactions, that's another high frequency in indicator, but they're not available in the public domain. Uh, sector level production, so a lot of times you're going to break up the impact in different sectors and see um, and from those get an aggregate estimate of the overall impact. That's really difficult uh, in the Indian context because there's a lot of manual record keeping and perhaps um, quite uh, there's a peculiarity or, or unique feed factor, which is in India, 90% of the labor workforce is in this so-called gray economy where there's essentially very little record keeping. But that, that segment uh, represents 45% of the economic output. Now, um, there, you know, one may ask, what's the advantage of accurate forecasting in economic impact? And this should be fairly you know, um, intuitive. 
it, it helps us answer questions like how much has COVID-19 affected the economy? How much it has affected production across sectors? How much funding will be required? Um, which states have had the highest impact and so on? So the utility is quite, quite readily apparent. And the utility of using night lights is also quite readily apparent because it fits perfectly with the kind of characteristics we discussed about uh, briefly earlier, you know, these, these images are unbiased, they're easily available, they can be collected in the midst of the pandemic and they can be, they're reproducible and verifiable. So very briefly, you know, this was the, uh, this slide talks to how the research was conducted. It's essentially a linear um, functional specification where you have GDP as the, as the Y variable, as the dependent variable, and you have sum of lights, that's the total sum of the intensity of the pixels within India, a sum of electricity and so on um, as, the, as your X variables. Uh, a number of different models were tried out, you know, using um, K nearest neighbors, random forest, XG boost, etc. But we have oftentimes found that, especially when it comes to NTL datasets, um, linear regression models are often outperform the more complex models. So a lasso ridge regression framework was used. And um, so on the right side, you know, what it shows is that in the in Q1 of 2020, fiscal year Q1, which is April through June in calendar year, there was a distinct drop in the national sum of night lights, the national electricity production, and based on these uh, values, the predicted drop in GDP was 24%. So that's the contraction that was predicted by the by the uh, linear model. Now this was you know, quite striking because um, SBI, which is State Bank of India, the equity research had published their estimates, which was around minus 16%. And there was a varying range of estimates between seven to 40%. Whereas the machine learning model based on NTL said it's going to be minus 24%. So at the time, you know, because the estimate appeared to have overestimated compared to the equity research, I mentioned that the analysis appears to overestimate the impact to the national GDP compared to uh, estimates published by the leading investment banks. And a possible reason for this discrepancy could be the effect of the national stimulus package of $260 billion, which, you know, there, there are certain incidents that could be, events that could be taking place on earth that, that night lights might not be reflecting. But interestingly, when the results came out, the actual results were published. This was after, you know, I had already um, uh, shared this paper with the results of minus 24%. When the results came out, <clears throat> we came to know that the GDP had contracted by 23.9%. So, you know, very close. Now, I'm not saying, you know, it was perfect, that the work was perfect, but the the fact that it tracked the actual contraction so closely was, was very um, striking. So in the uh, tutorial, um, and we have about 12 minutes in the tutorial, we're going to walk through the process of how we obtain the data from NASA, how we process the geospatial data from NASA at scale, and how we can then use the data for statistical analysis and inference. And um, to make this more manageable, um, considering the scale of the data sets and other things, we're going to look at just Connecticut, New York, and Massachusetts, um, and we're going to estimate the impact of COVID-19 on the GDP of these individual states during the April through uh, June timeframe. Uh, we can, uh, you know, just just to give a sense of, you know, where, the, where these locations are, this is the state of New York, this is Massachusetts, and this is Connecticut. So in this section, I'm going to quickly walk through the process of downloading the NTL data sets from NASA's website and then using those data sets to make predictions. Now, in the interest of time, I won't be able to go through, of course, each of these steps, um, but I do have the um, I do have the notebook uploaded on um, on GitHub so you can review it when you have time. Uh, so firstly, you know, we can get the data sets from LADS. LADS stack is where um, NASA publishes a number of their remote sensing data sets. And uh, from there, you, know, you can select, um, you can go to find data at the top, 
there are many different options. You select under products, you know, you have all these different remote sensing products listed. You're going to select BNP 46A3, which is the monthly aggregate of night lights. Um, and for, you know, any given time frame that you need it for, the location and the different ways to select locations, you can select entire countries, you can select just tiles, you can select you can use custom boxes uh, as well to make selections. So there are many ways to 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 get the data sets. And eventually, what's going to happen is you know you're going to get a, a list of files um, for a given time frame with the HDF5 files, um, the HDF5 files for a given time frame, and then you can use those to make um, you know to to extract the layers that you need. In any case, you know, in the interest of time, like I said, I'm not going to go through the entire process. Um, it's all there in the in the Jupyter notebook. So I'm just going to cover it at a very high level. So once the HDF5 files have been downloaded, we're going to extract the layers that we need in order to create a process GeoTIFF. The reason we are creating the process GeoTIFF is that um, the layers might not so that so there's a layer for let's say the radiance values on snow free days but not all the pixels are reliable that is you know they they might not be of 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 um, quality at which that we're confident that it represents the actual radiance of the actual light from a man made source so uh, we can use the quality flag to filter out those pixels field. We'll convert them to any values. Similarly, for snow days, we're going to filter out the pixels that are not of um, good quality. And then we're going to, um, anything that's not land will be ma masked out. So you can have vessels on, on, on sea and so on, which will add to the uh, net radiance, but, but it's not really um, you know, relevant. In any case, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to walk through the entire worksheet, but so here is the, here I'm explaining how, what I do with the HDF5 files one, the cleansing process has completed. What I essentially do is I take the, I take, I take uh, quarterly data. So I take the Jan, January processed HDF5 files the February process HDF files, and then I take a mean, like a pixel-wise mean, uh, to create a composite geotiff. So these are these aren't HDF files, sorry. These are the the process geotiffs after extracting the layers and curating the HDF files. Um, anyhow, uh, let me I'll go to the actual tutorial section. So. Uh, it it walks through the process in you know, a stepwise of how the files have been downloaded. Uh, you can use different methods, so you can either you know you can point and click and download them sequentially, or preferably you can use a token, so you can get a login token or an API token from uh, NASA's website, from Lad's website, and you can use that in wget or curl or different scripts uh, in order to automate the process. We're going to perform the raster algebra in order to extract the actual radiance values or the processed curated radiance values. And I'll maybe just quickly show you what these, um, what these uh, layers look like. So let's see if I take this one. Um, I can see it on Google Earth Pro. So I can pull this here and it's going to Overlay the the radiance layer um, on on the on on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so um, these are the lights. This is Syracuse, and and so on. So these all these pixels are not just they're not just white, right? They're, these these have values, and we can extract those values using. Um, GIST libraries. So um, let me, I'll, you know, uh, because we are short of time, I'm going to go to the to the final data set that I created, that we created after downloading this NTL uh, radiance, processing the NTL radiance values, and, and also downloading the GDP for each state. 
So this is the final um, data frame. So you have state, you have the year quarter, the, the, the quarterly you know, aggregate, the sum of lights, the, the sol represents the sum of the radiance values in corresponding to the state. The electricity usage during the time frame total represents the total number of pixels there that were that were lit during that time frame. That is not 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 a NAND value, um, and then the GDP corresponding to the quarter. So you have a regression whereby we we have GDP as the outcome variable, and then the sum of lights, uh, uh, the total number of lights, and the electricity usage are the x variables. The, or the uh, independent variables. What we saw was that during the second quarter, during the second quarter of last year, uh, there was a dip in the in the in the sum of lights. In fact, it started right in Q Q1, right the end of Q1. You started seeing a dip in the sum of lights um, as well. Uh, across all the states, right? So Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, both Q1 and Q2. These were also accompanied by dip in the usage of electricity uh, in each of those quarters. Uh, so what we want to, want to find out now is, can, does, did that, can we use the, the values in those quarters for night lights and electricity in order to predict how much the GDP uh, how much the GDP would have been affected. So, um, you know, I, I created different models. I created the lasso model, the ridge model. Generally, uh, linear models tend to perform better in, in, these, in these exercises, and that's what we have seen consistently across many models involving night lights. And we, we find a huge correlation. So there's a 98% correlation between the between GDP and night lights um, in, in, in any given region, really. So uh, I'll skip towards the end. Basically, what we um, what the what the results showed after creating the machine learning model and so on is we were these are the predictions for the different quarters. So the prediction here for the actual GDP was 248k the predicted GDP was 234K. Um, for Massachusetts, the actual GDP was 516K, the predicted what was 474 and so on. So basically uh, what, we, what we saw was a very close um, uh, relationship between the GDP, between GDP and the, the night lights uh, and the difference in most cases was below seven to eight percent. There was some cases where it was slightly higher, uh, was higher, but uh, nevertheless, you know, um, it 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 just went to show that you know we can use NTL as a proxy for GDP. Uh, now, of course, there are many other things you can do, but I I just want, wanted to um, share an example uh, by using. Uh, the states uh, as representative of the GDP exercise that was conducted. Now, the original exercise was conducted, of course, for India, which is which was a much much bigger exercise. This is, you know, a smaller version of the same, but and a much simpler version of the same. So, um, okay, I think that's that's it. You know, I'll I'll share the link to the to the notebook, and um, I'm sorry that I can't go through the whole thing, but. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And hopefully you'll, you'll find it useful if you were to review it afterwards. Thanks. All right, thank you. That was incredibly thorough. I like every question I came up with during the talk was answered actually. But we do have one question here to, for you to address quickly while, for the last minute or two. How easy did you find it to use various shapes, like the different, re say, regions, like states or counties, to pull out the light power? And maybe you could talk a little bit about the, the tools we used. Uh, yeah, so um, so it's it takes time. Uh, you know, you have to go through a lot of different resources. Now, NASA has made it incredibly easy to get the actual night light data sets from labs. In terms of what sci-fi tools I used, mainly GDAL uh, for GIS um, manipulations. 
as well as all the raster libraries. So in the notebook, you know, I posted all the different libraries I had to import. There's a lot of work that goes into it, which isn't, you know, immediately, um, uh, you know, uh, you have to actually go through it to realize what all you have to do to put it all together. Okay, yeah, it looked like you used a lot of different pieces all together to get this work to go. Yep. Okay, great. Um, well, note that the, uh, there are links to the repository and the um, notebook in the chat. And thank you again for your talk. We can stop here. Thank you.